Hi guys, I'm Ahana and welcome back to my channel. Now, this is going to be a monthly update video where I'll be telling you what I've been up to in the last couple of months and what the plans are for the month ahead. And I say last couple of months because I know I haven't been posting, but the reason why is to come in this video. If that sounds good to you, then keep on watching. Okay, so there are a lot of different things that have happened in the last couple of months, but at a high level, let's go through some of the things that have happened. So the first is YC Demo Day, which links into fundraising. The second is that I actually moved, hence why I also have a less elaborate background than I used to. The third is that I graduated from uni, I had my graduation ceremony. And the last point is that we launched our debit card. So those are the kind of four key topics I'll be discussing in this video in terms of what I've been up to over the last couple of months. And then I'll touch on what the plan is for the month looking forward. And just to note, I will be getting back to my videos on a weekly basis. All right, well, let's jump in to Demo Day. YC Demo Day happened in early September. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's essentially a convention for investors to gather and watch all the companies in the YC batch present and really give their one minute pitch. So I had the pitch down to a T, the partners helped finesse it, and through Demo Day, we had around 80 investor leads. Now, I strategically had started taking some investor meetings before Demo Day to get the ball rolling, to gauge interest, to get a little bit of practice pitching. And to be honest, I went into Demo Day feeling pretty confident. The app was doing really well, our retention numbers were good, our downloads were good, and I thought we had a really, really strong business model. I went into the fundraise and I'd had people tell me that fundraising is hard, but I don't think I had quite prepared for what I was about to go into from an emotional and mental perspective. And fundraising is a whole thing in itself. And I'll actually be filming another video, firstly explaining what fundraising is. And then so many stories have come from the last couple of months doing fundraising that I'll probably have to create a whole series of fundraising tales. But for the sake of keeping this video concise, I will let you know that I have been fundraising and I am still fundraising. And that really has been the primary reason that I haven't been filming these videos. I've been doing on average 10 meetings a day for the last three months. And I think I have grown so much through this experience. I have learned so much. And at the end of the day, at the age of 22, to be able to talk to the kinds of people that I have is a huge privilege. And even though it's been a challenge, I still feel so grateful that this is my job and this is what I get to do every day. But I won't delve too deep into it in this video. But if you're interested, do keep an eye out for future videos on the topic. Still on company stuff, uh, we launched our debit card. So again, I think I mentioned that we were launching this uh, in a previous video. And essentially the idea for the debit card really just stemmed because we could see that our users were spending money through our platform and actually buying skincare based off of the recommendations and the product discovery that they were doing on our platform. Now, when I started Clear, I'd always known that, you know, the skincare industry is massive. It's a $200 billion industry. And there just isn't much innovation on a content creation side, on sort of a payment side, actually making skincare more accessible, and also to an extent on the data and cosmetic formulation side of things. But this is a huge problem to tackle all in one, but this has always been the long-term vision for the company and still is the long-term vision. The question was, how do we get there step by step? Now, given that we were at the stage where we were seeing really good organic growth, really good engagement in the app, I thought that this would be a great time to test the payment side of things and see what we can do to innovate there. Now, having seen more verticalized neobanks launching cards with optimized rewards programs, I wondered if this was something that could work for Clear. And so I did a little bit of work. I started talking to the banking as a service providers to understand logistically and practically how difficult is it to launch a card. I also spoke to our partner brands and retailers to understand if they'd be willing to give us any discounts or any cashback rates. And given that skincare is a really high margin business, I went in with the assumption that they would, but of course it's an assumption that I needed to test. So I really used that opportunity over the last couple of months as well to see are retailers willing to give us better rates? And I found that they are because they want to be on our platform and have access to our community. Simultaneously, in the app itself, we only launched the debit card to 10 users in the US in a closed pilot, but we also just had a screen in the app itself where users who were already using Clear could sign up for the debit card if they were interested in it. And the purpose of this was to test that do users want discounts on their skincare? And more importantly, are they willing to go through the effort of getting one more card if it offers better discounts? So this was really the, the idea. And from a business model perspective, the way this works is that 
I do the hard work, negotiate the cashback rates with each and every retailer and brand individually. We pass that entire discount onto the user to help you save money. And by virtue of being the card issuer, we make something called interchange revenue. So we make some money on every transaction that a user does with our card. The user doesn't face anything, they just get products for cheaper. And simultaneously, what this allows us to do is actually insert ourselves into the payment flow. So once we have people buying their skincare with their clear cards, we can actually go back to the brands and say, look, it doesn't cost us anything to process a transaction from a clear user account to a clear business account. So if we process your payments, we can actually offer you really, really cheap processing fees and undercut all the existing players. And that really is the vision. But to get there, we needed to validate the assumptions step by step. And that was what we did. The plan is really to start as a social community, kind of like a Strava for skincare, get people sharing their skincare routines and really engaging with the community and bringing content creation and transparency to social media in the context of skincare onto Clear, onto our platform. So I hope that makes it a little more clear why we launched a debit card. I know a lot of people were a bit confused about why we were going down that route and what that actually looked like, what the form factor was for us as a company. So to summarize, it was really to validate these longer term assumptions that we had and I can confirm that we were able to get really good rates from the retailers and brands. I can also confirm that we had almost 2,000 people sign up to the waitlist without having to spend a penny on that marketing campaign. And we also had the tech capabilities to do it. We launched the card product. We have all the infrastructure to get that going at any point in time, to roll that out to our waitlist. So overall, we tested and it was successful. So in the future, we will definitely be going ahead with this and staying consistent with our original business model. Okay, so I've covered the fundraising and the debit card. Now looking more sort of at me personally, what changes have happened in my life. As I touched on at the beginning of the video, there is no longer the fancy background that you saw in previous videos. And that was because I used to live in London, I lived in a student flat, and I would film my videos in my parents' house, which was much nicer, much more photogenic than my, uh, my dingy basement flat. I came to the end of my degree, so my tenancy ended, and my boyfriend, who I've been living with for the last four years, uh, was accepted to Oxford University to start a quantum computing PhD. And as such, it made sense for us to continue living together, my work is completely remote, I can work from anywhere, and the accommodation is a lot cheaper in Oxford than it is in London. So I made the decision to move with him uh, to Oxford. So that's where I am. But my parents still live in London. Most of my investors in the UK are also in London. So I do shuttle back, back and forth between Oxford and London, but I have now moved as a grown up into my own house. The other big personal update is that I finally graduated from university. I'll put in a picture somewhere above here um, of the ceremony, but it was at the Royal Albert Hall. I graduated from Imperial College London, did a physics degree. It's also not a super straightforward story there because I originally signed up for the four year integrated master's course and actually dropped out halfway through the fourth year because we got into YC and I've already been through the story. It was my dream job and I had to jump at that opportunity. The way that the four year integrated master's course works is that in the third year, you can do an optional bachelor's thesis. And if you opt in to do that optional thesis, you do have the requirements to graduate with a bachelor's. However, if you choose to do an extra module, let's say I wanted to do an extra lecture course, I actually wouldn't have been able to graduate in the way I did. So I kind of got quite lucky and maybe I knew that I would always drop out in my fourth year. I guess you'll never know. But in all seriousness, doing that bachelor's project in my third year made it way easier for me to graduate. The ceremony was held last week and it was actually really nice to see everyone again because we hadn't seen our peers pretty much for two years. But overall, it was a really nice send off and a nice form of closure to that chapter of my life. And I'm now moving forward from my degree as an adult. So those were the major updates from the last couple of months. As I said, the bulk of it was on fundraising and as such, there will be way more content to come on that topic specifically. But now looking forward, I will only be fundraising for one more month after that Sorry investors, I will not be taking your meetings. The time I spend fundraising is time spent away from the company and product and marketing and business development. So we're really on the last legs of our fundraise now, just taking those last couple of checks. And we have some incredible investors who've joined us in this round. And, and honestly, just some, some amazing people that I've met through this experience as well. Um, but we are almost there and have already started hiring actually. So I guess that's another update that I forgot to mention, um, that we have brought uh, a backend developer on board and have also signed a contract with our fantastic UX engineer as well. I'm sure you will meet uh, our lovely team members at some point. It's honestly just so exciting now, you know, that we have 
this money to really think about the next steps of the company and how do we hit our series A milestones. And talking to other founders, it's also been very interesting because, you know, fundraising was the big challenge everyone was going through. And now as we're starting to come to the end of that, it's not like the problems go away. It's not like money fixes the problems because then there's new problems and there's hiring problems. How do you find the right talent? How do you incentivize them? How do you manage a growing team? And then similarly on the product side, how do you start scaling? How do you start growing your user base, showing even stronger metrics that you can prove out to investors at your next funding round? So it's it's really interesting. The cycle never really ends, but I think that's what I love so much about this job, that you are constantly faced with new challenges and you have to grow and adapt as a person because your job changes month on month. What I'm doing this month was not what I was doing last month months before I was fundraising, but the month before that, uh, I was doing something very different. So, you know, it's, it's really been a great experience. And as I said, this will be my last month fundraising. I'm slowly getting back into product as well. We have an awesome product roadmap for the next six months. It's super detailed. Me and Ben worked on that together. And I cannot wait for you to see some of the features that we're implementing on the app. So that's all for this video. Hopefully it wasn't too rambly and I'm sorry that I didn't go into too much detail about the fundraise, which is really the main thing that's happened in the last couple of months. But keep an eye out for the next video where I will be going more into detail about fundraising, why startups need to fundraise and all of that good stuff. All right, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.